great pleasure to be here to, to speak at this, this conference of yours today. And it's thing here that and bring over here brought to mind to me a movie that came out about 12 years ago with Tom Hanks and I, I think it was Paul Newman in the lead roles, uh, The Road to Perdition, where I don't remember much of the script, but it was one, lots of scenes of dark gray, s wet streets with um, prohibition area gangland cars and um, lots of gunfire, heaps of dead bodies all over the place. And eventually it wound its way through to a little hell hole called Perdition, where in a moving scene, the Tom Hanks and the last of his, his rivals killed each other in a rave of, of gunfire. And that to me brought to mind what many BI and MI type initiatives can head in that particular road, to be like that and to be something not particularly effective. But the truth is the very opposite is very possible as well, because the we can take it towards perdition and destruction or towards something that really adds significant value into the business. And my talk today is really pulling back over many years of experience in the world of trying through information to enhance the quality of decision making through business, but particularly focusing on an 11 year period when I was involved in an explicit MIBI project, which I'm very pleased to say that a number of people who worked with me through those years are here in the audience today. But I assess today are, are my observations and thoughts on what goes well and, can, and also in reflection what we did that could have go gone better, where we might have done things differently and taken it even further up that road from perdition to paradise. I was very fortunate through this because I think I got probably the best opening instructions any BI executive could, could ever hope for. A CEO fairly recently appointed in the job, me into the business and his instruction was very simple. He says, I don't think this business is doing well, but no one's giving me the information to tell me how it's doing or what I need to do to fix it. And it came very clear very quickly that the business was in fact doing extremely poorly at that stage. And although he was getting literally kilograms of mainframe reports d delivered to his office, as well as lots of happiness reports telling him what people thought he wanted to hear, he was actually getting no information on how the business was, was doing. And through to follow through here will be some of the key things that for me have made a difference in how you can change business in that position. Of course, the first thing with any business is that it's a case of data is everywhere these days. Data is the core variable, and we all know the old saying that um, garbage in, garbage out. So how you work with the data is, is critical, whether you're talking big data, corporate data, data generated through operations, be it on production lines, call centers, data sitting in great piles of documents, either physically or, or digitally that are there, and how to harness this for the use of the business. Because we all know the cost of managing data might be coming down, but you're still burning a lot of money through that process. And the challenge there is really to say, what do we need, what don't we need? And from experience, we could say that the road to perdition is cobbled with lots of good data that's managed and looked after, but is never used and potholed by all that data that companies desperately need, but is in too poor condition to be used or is not even stored, and so it cannot be used in any process. And it's at this stage that um, often BI initiatives run into their first bit of trouble because it's trying to secure funding, because the one thing that you learn very quickly if you're involved in BI, that it's not for the faint-hearted, it's not for the, the tight, the tight-fisted, and it's certainly not for the short-sighted, because it's something that's a long-term initiative to make a significant difference, and there always will be costs associated through the, the BI process in terms of whether it's building your infrastructure you need, bringing in the skills, just getting your tools, processes, and everything else that you need through there. And I think from this, as you set up your frameworks, there are really two, two key components that I need to draw attention to here. And the first one, with the range of sponsors we have here, I say with a certain amount of trepidation, but I think it's important that it's said, and that is that we're all aware of the saying that where there's a will, there are relatives. So, <laughs> so too, where there's a BI initiative happening, there are plenty of vendors, consultants, contractors waiting for their piece of the action, ready to get involved, ready to help in their way. And the key message I'd give to anyone getting involved there is decide where, which direction you want to go, what kinds of tools, what kind of place, what kind of partners you want to work with, 
and then with the exception of exceptional circumstances, stick with your decision because it can only deepen the holes, delay de delivery if we are chopping and changing between consultants and partners along the way. And the other advice on that same theme is in terms of be very wary of cross-vendor integrations that need to be done. I think you'll find these are invariably more complex than expected. They cost more, they take longer, and even when implemented, they're more likely to fall down, and no one's ever accountable for them. We can go with the road to perdition is signposted by vendors pointing out who's accountable for the latest integration collapse that happened. And the next side through building your framework is to understand the decision-making culture in your organization because the lack of data and the excess of, of information are sometimes equally bad in terms. So one needs to decide what are the things that you need in real time, what's information that the business really needs in real time, what is needed daily, weekly, monthly, even quarterly, and how long after the end of a period support the business, business decision-making because it's one of these things that, um, that knowledge of the culture of the business will help you know when it needs to be the information so it's delivered on time to support the decision because each one of those will have an impact on cost, impact on how you impact on the operations of the company. And again, while we stick with the road to perdition, it's really buffeted by the gales of that brilliant intelligence that gets in the way and no one ever uses. At the same time, it's littered with the corpses of those organizations that never made a decision because they're waiting for the, the information or made an information without the information, made a decision without the information to back it up. And it's through this knowing it's going to cost a lot more than just getting your data started. And it's also a place where you find you run into a lot of enemies, where people and certain things feel threatened by the existence of a BI initiative that really opens up the enterprise so people can see what's really going on. So the importance of a strong sponsor that will help you get through so your, your program doesn't end up in a wasteland that is effectively going nowhere, and the importance of having that incremental delivery so people see the, the value coming through, and ultimately it can come to be that phoenix bringing the organization out from the ashes. Over the time we have left here, there really are five points that I think are very important to keep us on that right track for them to keep you away from the road to perdition. And the fifth one, ready to spearhead the organization, that next quantum leap up to take towards the, the paradise of improved performance and excellent results through the organization. And the first one of these is leadership. And I think it's something we talk in the quality of leadership, but more importantly, the, the focus of leadership. Business intelligence, as the name suggests, is a business project. It's about enabling the business to be more effective, enabling the business to find out what's going on, enabling better decision makers, making better risk management in the organization. So it really requires that business focus, that understanding of business measurement, what are the things that really drive and support the strategy of the business, and that, that courage to be able to say the things that no one wants to, to hear said or to point out the things that everyone would prefer not to have pointed out. I think that there are two that the focuses that can really get this out of line. As one view it as a data project or as a um, systems project and having it run from, from that perspective where you're likely to have brilliant data, brilliant systems, but the alignment between the strategy of the organization and the decisions that need to be made with what's being delivered is not always there. The second one is seeing it as a bean counting thing, part of the, called it the public reporting cycle with uh, parts of the business that get excited when they see the letters IFRS, because that's a part of the business that's designed really to say this is what's happened and to provide the minimum possible information that will meet regular requ regulatory requirements against the culture of saying where's the business need to be going, what's aligned to the strategy, and how much information can we get out to make sure the business can run itself better. And of course, the, probably the worst of the lot is to put it with the corporate cheerleaders who are looking only for the good news of the company and to be able to put that out in all areas. Although promoting performance in the public domain is good, the most important component for anyone involved in, in the BI side is to be able to give the good, the bad, the ugly, the pathetic, the extremely ugly, and make sure it's all put across with equal passion. If when I was given the brief to come here, I was told I had enough time to make one point, it'll probably be this next point. 
that probably the most essential thing in any measurement system that you're coming together is that there's internal integrity in the measurements that you use. Particularly if you're using any form of ratio, there's correspondence between the different halves of the ratio, where you're giving rates of growth or attrition that the two halves of the equation tie up together, because it's, it's one of those things, the integrity of the, the measurement determines where the organization's going forward. I think we've all heard the say, cliche that um, what gets measured gets managed, as someone involved in BI, we should be losing a lot of sleep over thinking about its ugly sister, which is what gets measured gets manipulated. And when there's an absence of integrity in the measure, it's a lot easier often to manipulate it than to manage it. And where the measures tie through into performance contracts, into remuneration rewards, the temptation to do what is easiest is always there, and I'm yet to come across an auditor that's actually found errors and measures, so it's important from the start to have them correct, because while manipulating the measures, the truth is the underlying performance is staying what, it's, what it is, and it's through this, and we often get those nasty shocks when something goes belly up, like a pyramid scheme or an Enron, when the measures are all looking so good, and suddenly it goes down, it's often down to the fact that the absence of integrity in those measures was at the heart of it. If I go back to the organization I was with where the business was in trouble at the start of the 11-year period. There are a number of reasons for it, most beyond the scope of our discussion here today. But the one reason that I'd say was definitely in the top three was to say that um, there was one key measure that rolled its way right through performance measures into remuneration, into rewards, that had a complete lack of integrity to the measure. The underlying performance was sliding badly, the measure was holding up and looking good, but there was very poor underlying performance on that particular measure and we saw it flowing through. It became so endemic that almost implicitly through the training, there was more on how to manipulate it than to manage it, was effectively how, how it was working. I think we can really look at this and say that um, if you, your measures lack integrity, then it's really go straight to perdition. Do not pass go, do not collect 200, but be very aware and be tormented forever by the fact that a lot of people laughing all the way to the bank, having gained rewards from the manipulated measures. I think in short on this one, you can summarize it. If your business struts like a rooster, don't present it as charging like a rhinoceros. The next point is one that in many ways I'm almost embarrassed to put out. It seems so obvious and it is very obvious, but it's going seen through quite a few organizations. It's an error that's very readily made. Of, of simple statistics in the business to come to wrong conclusions. And particularly here I refer to where we're using things like aggregates and averages, mean standard deviations to come to the wrong conclusion. You know, a simple analogy would be that any of us going into big game farming are unlikely to say we've got camels who like it hot and dry, polo bears who like it cold and wet, so let's find ourselves a temperate da damp forest and we'll put them all there and everyone will be happy and will perform very well there. Now it doesn't make sense, but we see that happening in, in business decisions all the way, particularly where people want to make decisions quickly and not go through the thing of really understanding what's happening underneath. And the other one related to that is the fruit basket problem that um, really is there across so many different industries where people are adding grapes and watermelons, coming up with pieces of fruit, and that's coming across in des decisions made and in understandings of business, whether it's adding lump sum amounts to installment amounts or adding the sale of vehicles to the sale of parts and coming up with various measures which really tell very little, but that's happening fairly strongly in many places. Next one, of course, we can have the best systems, the best intelligence, but how is it used and understood? I think the first temptation that I've seen coming across is to overcomplicate things, and particularly things like dashboards, balanced scorecards, performance contracts, scorecards, whatever you want to, want to call them, where we're told that the average human being can comfortably deal with about seven factors. I've seen scorecards that people are measured to and work to running to over 50 factors, which to me either shows that people don't really know what drives the business, or it's a tool that encourages indifference because with 50 you just don't know where to start, or it's really a tool of torture because there'll always be at least one of them's not performing, so you can climb into the guy for at least one, one failing on the thing. And of course, linked to that, the length of a report, something that is, to me, a 100-page report might be a, a great compliance vehicle, it might it might be a great place to bury bad news, but it's very unlikely to be a good intelligence and information report. The next 
thing is it needs to be fully ingrained in the discussion of the business. The dialogue at an executive level and right through the tiers of the organization needs to be built around this information, rather than around hard reports, around understanding and interrogate what this information is really saying. And the most important on this category is to make sure that the people using it actually understand what they're doing, that the people are trained in what this, these measures mean, this training, because they cannot be empowered to actually do what they, they need to do until they're trained and understand it, with the two failings being that people are not trained and are expected to be accountable and effectively totally unempowered to do their work, or people that are untrained on the continuous never-never and never accept the accountability for it. We need to s the, the path between those two extremes. I think these four of us spoken to in terms of your leadership, in terms of the integrity of your measurement, in terms of making sure it's used properly, and that it's understood and rolled out through the, out the organization will take you from that path towards perdition, towards a place that you can run a business very effectively. But to really move it on to have something where you have a, a level of integration through your thinking processes in the business where business are asking those important questions, what if, what, what next, what might happen if we do this? What is the downside risk in doing this particular thing is where the real skill comes in in dealing with it and where, for me, the real excitement of where you can really extract value out of the BI process. And that is in terms of being able to model where this business is going going forward. We've heard quite a bit about Excel in the earlier session today, and I think Excel is a great tool, but I think there's a lot of Excels used to come up with pseudo models that give, in the face of thinking about it, not very sound sound logic, that straight um, projection going forward. You know, if you can run the 100 meters in 10 seconds, 90 Ks you can do in 9,000 seconds, so it will give you two and a half hours to do the comrade, something of that order, which doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but that able to come up with a, a range of options. Where's this thing going? You have this raw intelligence and in where you stand now, where might this be taking your business going, going forward? What are the downside risks? What are the upside risks? What are the things that drive this decision? Because in that context, you can be on a winning business, where they say that the winning businesses get more than half the things right, and they can correct the wrong decisions very quickly. And that really is what this will give you that opportunity. So I think we can say in summary, the choice is really yours and for your organization through a few fairly simple decisions as to whether you're heading towards perdition or towards paradise. And give one last, be probably remiss of me not to really say if you really want to move that last step, engage some actuaries in the process for doing that modeling, that'll make all the difference. Thank you, enjoy the conference. Thank you.